What up, what up, YouTube? We are back at it again, and we have really good news. All of our random parts from Empy and Topline have finally arrived. We got our new shocks all built from our last video, which if you didn't watch, you can see the link here. And if you're interested, we also did a video on our F100 where we replaced the locks, where I put the video here as well. But, like I said, we have all the parts we need to finish the teardown on the bug and start reassembling. Um, before we get into anything, we're just going to go through an unboxing of stuff and kind of talk through what we bought. Alright, again, so a quick rundown of what parts we have. If you didn't watch our last video, um, so we built our top line struts. I have them set, I think, to either two and a half or three inches lower. We'll put them on and see how they work. Uh, we got new ball joints. And then we were waiting for really all of these parts to show up. Uh, we got the, now I can't even remember, it was so long. But we got a 7 8 inch sway bar. We got our strut, I would call this a strut brace. I think it might be called something else, but a strut brace for the front. Uh, we have all our wheel bearings, new tie rods, new steering damper. And then we got a disc brake kit because I wanted to do that and this is like the perfect time since everything's taken apart. So we have the brackets for the disc brakes as well as the calipers. Sorry, the brackets for the calipers and the physical calipers, which I already have uh, pads installed, which is nice. And they're kind of cool. They have like a gold finish to them, which I don't think will look bad. Um, you won't really see them on the actual uh, <laughs> car because I still have the steelies. I also came with brake lines and I got the speed, uh, the speed bleeders as well. And these are the the brackets for that uh, strut brace. <clears throat> so, actually before we get to putting anything on the car, we still have to kind of finish tearing it down. So we'll remove the tie rods and we'll clean up the spindles. I have a center link, but didn't show up yet. So hopefully that shows up before we finish everything. Um, but we'll clean up the spindles, we'll clean up the control arms, and then we'll start putting everything back together. So that really wasn't too bad. We got the spindles off. Um, we're gonna definitely need to clean them up. They're pretty beat. I'm actually gonna take this and put this somewhere now while I think of it. This is for the speedometer cable, which is on the driver's side. Um, but yeah, the savior was this tool. I can't believe how easy that made. I've never had a tool uh, get rid of stuck ball joints that good. I got this on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But, let's see, this thing right here, yeah, this thing was awesome. It took like no effort to get both those ball joints out, so I'll have to use this for the center link as well. Um, the problem I have is it hasn't showed up yet, so we're going to keep tearing down, but hopefully the center link shows up, because that's kind of, I need that to reassemble. Um, so fortunately, that's pretty easy. Like I said, we'll keep tearing down the spindles till they're just basically only that. We'll clean them up, and then we'll reassemble them with the adapters that we have here for the calipers for the disc brakes and then we also will put in our new tie rods and our steering damper once we have the center link. So now that we have everything like kind of a first pass I cleaned up, we use the simple green and a Brillo pad. 
Um, everything came pretty clean. There's still a little bit of rust on some places. The spindles overall look okay. Um, the one's a little banged up that we had a fight, you know, to get out of the actual, uh, out of the bug. But so what we'll do now is we'll hit them all with the wire reels just to get anything kind of left. And then we'll use our little, like, uh, scotch Bright pad for the, the uh, angle grinder. And we'll put it in and just get those surfaces cleaned up that the spin, uh, the caliper bracket will mount to. And also do our best to clean up any rust where the strut will mount through as well. So that's what we'll deal with next. All right, so <clears throat> we took a little time, used a little elbow grease, and really got these cleaned up pretty good. Um, my main focus, like I don't really care how all this looks. Um, my main focus is really the mating area with the strut and the mating area with our caliper plate, caliper bracket. These are both pretty rusty in those locations. Uh, this one actually came up pretty clean for the strut hole. Um, but I'll probably hit them both just very lightly with some sandpaper just to make sure that we don't get the strut stuck in here. This was the worst of the two. You can see it's pretty banged up on this surface, but I think we're still going to be fine and just send it. Um, if this ends up breaking or cracking or something, then that's on me, but I think it's honestly going to be fine. So we're going to deal with it um, and maybe get another one down the road if we really need to. Uh, then we got these cleaned up as well. So we'll push the bushings into those. But like I said, really the pri priority is just making sure this inner surface is cleaned up and then we'll pop the struts on. We'll assemble everything back into the bug. Uh, we still don't have the center link, so that's really gonna kind of hold this up. But in the meantime, I can at least take everything else apart. Um, we'll have it all out and then we'll be able to put the center link together when we have it with the tie rods. Um, but yeah. So like I said, we'll get these assembled with the struts and then we'll probably get it all ass assembled onto the car with the strut bar, the stress bar. Um, and then from there, we'll go to either the brakes or the tie rods, depending on what we have. We'll also install a larger sway bar somewhere in the mix, but that's pretty easy to put in at any point. So we got the spindles all cleaned up. They fit perfectly on the struts now. So that's great. One thing I forgot is there's actually a part of this where you flip the tie rods to help with bump steer um, and it requires you to have the, the hole for the tie rods drilled out to fit this new kind of adapter bushing in there. Um, I don't have a drill press so I'm going to figure out a machine shop or somewhere to take those to get the holes opened up to fit this in. So in the meantime for tonight I'm probably just going to pull the center link out so that we have everything disassembled and ready to go. I've uh, just been hitting a lot of roadblocks with this. I have 95% of the parts I need, but unfortunately that other 5% along with drilling the holes is what's stopping me from putting everything back together. But we'll keep working on it and try to get stuff done in the meantime, and hopefully we'll get those drilled out tomorrow or by the end of this week. Um, and then hopefully, I haven't even gotten updated shipping on the center link. Um, order from JBugs, it said it was in stock. Uh, ordered it about two weeks ago. Couldn't get a hold of them, couldn't get a hold of them. Then they finally told me that it's moving to like a warehouse. So it's in stock, but still not shipping for two weeks. Um, and then I also ordered it from SIP1 or things like California Import, something or another. And I haven't heard from them when it's going to ship either. So hopefully that center link shows up or else the car's not going back together anytime soon. But like I said, we'll stay busy in the meantime. So just like before, we have one of these really stuck tie rod. This is from the center link to the, I think they call this like the link arm or something. But we'll use that tool again. It should work. It's pretty easy to get this off. Hopefully if it works as good as it did earlier. So grab this one. This is really cool. I like this a lot. I wish I had this before. Cool. 
seats on. Oops. Like nothing. So we'll get the other side and then we'll get this all removed. Alright, it's a new day. We have the drop link out. That was really easy to remove. Um, we were fortunate. We found a machine shop that will actually uh, machine the spindles. It's going to take a couple days, so we have to just wait for them to do it. But we did find a shop to do that, so that's really good. Um, so we have the drop, the center link, and tie rods removed we have the control arms cleaned up we have all of this ready to go on the car but without the center link we're in a little bit of a standstill for some of the parts we will be able to put it on the control arms um, and the sway bar but i think the next thing i'm actually going to do which i wasn't 100 percent sure i was going to do or not is actually we're going to remove our whatever this link is here um it's with these three bolts and i actually oh i think it's called the idle arm i actually got a new bushing for that too i wasn't sure if i was going to get to it or not but because we have the extra time i'm actually going to pull this out as well with these three bolts you see here and we'll get that whole assembly out clean it up and replace the bushing since we kind of have the time to do it while we wait for extra parts um so we'll show you that now all right it took me a minute to find it but we need this h14 allen to take this arm apart. So we'll do that real quick and then we'll be able to clean this all up like everything else and we'll press in this new bushing. I'm going to show you guys in a second once I get this out. And then so you see here we'll push out this bushing, we'll clean this all up and we'll replace it with a new one. We'll clean this arm up as well because it's pretty nasty. All right, so no surprise here, but we had another part that fought us for a very long time. And I'll just show you guys, I mean, this was a lot of hitting it with the chisel, uh, hammering a 13 16 socket ended up being like the perfect size. Um, this is a 19, you can see it's just a little too big and too much flop, 13 16 were perfect. And here's what the new bushing looks like. You see there's a flange on it. And basically the only way I could get it out, because the problem is the flange covers this whole surface so you don't have anything flat to press on. I got the most success by actually using the chisel to break off that whole flange. So then it left the inner ring and then I was able to actually have a flat surface on both sides so I could use my regular press tool right there with the lead screw and it worked pretty well. And then the rest of this I'll probably get out with the regular press now that I actually have flats to work with. So we'll get this out, clean it up. Um, we're still waiting on the rest of the parts, so I'll probably clean everything up and give them a quick coat of black paint just to make everything look nice. And then by then, we should have all the parts we need back from the machine shop and from SIP1. And we should be ready to put everything back in and finally drive the car again. All right, so it's a couple days later. Uh, you might be able to tell by my beautiful haircut. Um, but we have gotten all the parts we were waiting for. So our center link has showed up. It looks great. Um, we got our spindles drilled out and pressed in our new um, bushings for the flip kit. I, if you're in North Carolina, um, in the Raleigh area, I went to a company called Weathers Manufacturing. They're awesome. Um, so I just want to give them a shout out. They're not like... They don't advertise as being a machine shop or for car parts, um, but they're really cool and they kind of just took in the work um, to help me out. So really happy with that. Um, really at this point, I'm still gonna clean up the two control arms as well as the, I don't know what that's called, like the drop arm or whatever it is, housing. Uh, we'll clean them up and get them painted. While well, the paint's drying, we'll start to assemble the uh, center link with the tie rods. And then we can start putting everything back together. So this is really exciting. Um, we'll kind of be multitasking between paintings. We'll start by cleaning all these up and then we'll kind of multitask between putting on coats of paint outside and assembling parts on the bug in here. So we'll get into that right away.
I am pumped how these control arms came out. We're just painting in the backyard using a ladder at my paint station. I feel like they actually came out really good. So unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna end up painting the spindles too. So before I put things together, basically I didn't get to even start assembling because I was so focused on painting these. Um, so now I'm just gonna paint the spindles as well and get everything painted nice and new. We'll probably do the drop arm anyway, so I still need to paint some stuff. Um, oh, and this as well. I painted the bushing holder, or whatever, the drop link holder. I don't know what all these parts are called, so I apologize, but painted that as well. Yeah, everything's in pretty good shape. So we'll get everything painted and then we'll start assembling. It should go together pretty quickly now that all the parts are new. Um, I don't see any huge issues other than maybe pressing bearings into the uh, brake rotors. But we'll get into it and uh, I'll just update you when I have everything painted and then we'll start assembling. I am so happy with how these came out. They look great. I was actually debating whether or not to do it. Um, but we got it done. So now everything is painted other than the arm for the steering box. I couldn't get it off and I really don't have a good solution for the steering box yet, whether I'm going to rebuild it or replace it. For right now, it's just going to stay and we're going to replace the little $4 bushing that goes in there. So with that, we have everything painted that we need painted. All we have to do is put it all back in the car. So let's get that done now. All right, so one thing I probably won't show you guys is just this new strut, the steering damper strut you can see here that I had installed. And that is really straightforward. Like I said, we're not doing anything with the steering box as of now. Um, I'll show you a link in my previous video if you look here. Um, but we created like, uh, we moved the battery up front and we created a little paneling here to make it a little easier to go in and out. But we made sure to make sure to access that bolt still. So luckily that was nice and easy. Uh, everything with the damper is fine now. So uh, from there, all we have to do is press the bushings and the control arms, and then we can get the control arms on the car, we can get the struts on, or the shocks on, and then we can get the spindles. So we'll get into all that now. And I really wasn't gonna show this, but I am, because I'm just so impressed with the piece. I ended up going ahead and borrowing, uh, buying the spring compressor, the strut compressor tool right from uh, Topline. And this is awesome, super high quality. Now granted, it's only gonna work with this set, but it actually fit, now I understand why these grooves are here. The compressor actually fits right in those. It's a super tight fit, super reliable. Uh, I'm just doing this as a sanity check, just to make sure that this nut is tightened down correctly. Uh, cause I really don't want it coming loose once we're in there. It feels good. Uh, but I didn't, I did it with, uh, less than ideal tools prior. So I'm just going to sandy check that and then we'll get this in the car. All right, just a quick update because we've had a lot go on uh, kind of since I've last talked with you all. Uh, so we got the new shocks, uh, uh, control arms with new bushings, our center link, our tie rods, our sway bar, and I even put on the plate our adapter bracket for our calipers for our disc brakes. So we're really moving along at this point. Really, everything's even been tightened down. The last thing we kind of need to check is for our suspension stuff will be just that uh, control arm bolt. It kind of, um, 
I it's like offset so it controls your camber adjustment so well I kind of I guess kind of camber and toe combined so at some point I'll have to just make sure that that's tightened down and in a relatively good place we matched our tie rods with what was on the uh, bug originally so that should be pretty close to good um, so yeah the last thing we really need to do is just get our disc brakes all put together uh, and then we get the car back on the ground, which I'm really excited for. Um, and then obviously we'll need to like bleed our brakes and things like that. But we're getting very close. Everything's really moving quick now that we got, uh, we're putting things back together. Everything's been cleaned up. Uh, so it shouldn't be very long before we have it back on the ground and uh, moving around. I wasn't going to show you guys this because I didn't think it was that important. Uh, but I'm just opening up the disc brakes to clean them. Uh, with brake clean before I press the races in for the bearings. This one looks great. They ship them in this like weird uh, plastic cylinders from J-Bugs. But the problem is this is how the other one showed up. It's like all rusted and messed up. <clears throat> the edges of it are all rusted out. It's not even just like surface rust. It's actually like pretty good in there. I don't even know what the hell this is. It almost looks like someone used this already or something. Um, but so this is going to be another step back. I'm going to contact them and I'll update you all, uh, cause this is kind of the last step. So without this, uh, we're kind of at a set still until we get a new one. Uh, so I'll update you guys as soon as I know what's going on. All right. So quick update. Uh, we contacted J bugs. They're going to make it right. They're sending out a new one. They told me just to toss this one cause they have no use for it either. Um, so in the meantime, I'm still going to put the, I'm going to do the driver's side and show you guys how to do that all. I already pressed in the bearing race on the front and, or the inner and the outer. Um, so we'll pack the bearings, load them in, and then we'll mount the driver's side caliper, uh, sorry, disc. Then we'll go to the caliper. We'll set it if we need to with any of the shims that they provide. And we'll just kind of wrap up the whole driver's side and get everything completed there so that when the passenger side or whatever, the other disc shows up, ready to go throw that on and we can put the car back on the ground and bleed the brakes. All right, so now that we put the rotor on, or the disc, uh, the next thing we need to do is install the caliper so we can figure out if we need to use any of the shims or spacers. Uh, before I put the caliper on, I'm gonna disassemble it so I can add some brake, uh, what do you call it? Some brake lube. And then I'll also replace the regular bleeder with a speed bleeder, because I grabbed these with the brakes. So we'll do that real quick, and then we'll put this caliper on, and then that's kind of all we'll be able to do for now until we have the, uh, what I'm calling the driver side disc. Alright, so now we just need to put the caliper on and see if we need to use any washers to center it on the disc. Alright, and unfortunately this is extremely off-center. Uh, I think I can show you here. So you can, I don't know how easy it is to see, but there's a very small, there's actually no gap here, it's touching and there's all the gap here so we'll have to get well i'll just measure what this is and cut it in half and use that many washers to get to that distance and it's exactly the same on the bottom too so it'll be even on both top and bottom 
All right, so we figured out we're gonna need one fat one and two of the smaller ones for each of the bolts, so that's fine. But the only problem is, of course, this kit didn't come enough to do that on both sides. So I'm gonna take measurements of the thinner one, which I'm short on, just to make sure I have enough for the other side, just in case. So now you can see I added a few shims in, or washers. And it's still a little hard to see, but we're definitely centered between these. Uh, so now I'll just take the bolts out, lock tight them, and we'll call this done. We'll torque it all down. And then really that's everything we can do for now until we get the other disc in. And then we can bleed the brakes and put the car back on the ground. All right, we got our new rotor in and she's a beaut. Uh, this one was packed up a lot better. They even used bubble wrap, which wasn't included in the previous, which I think is why the plastic little drum that the uh, rotor shipped in didn't crack and long story short we have a better rotor than before uh, so we'll do everything exactly the same as we did to get this one on so we will press in the bearing races pack the bearings load them in and we will mount the rotor um, so i'll do that all off camera because like i said we already kind of showed that with the passenger side we'll get this all on then we just have to bend up our hard lines for the brakes and bleed the brake system all right, so we've got the new disc and new caliper on on the driver's side as well. So everything's great there. We had to do about the same amount of spacers, unfortunately, but so it's all set. Uh, so really all we have to do now is we're gonna do the hard lines and bleed the brakes. Uh, so what I did was I test fit and kind of bent up a hard line for the driver's side. Then I moved over to the passenger side, confirmed it's the same fitment. So now we'll use that as a template to just bend up the other uh, I have my little Harbor Freight Bender, so this should take no time. We'll get those in. Uh, then I'll grab my wife to help me bleed the brake system, and then we can put the car back on the ground. I'm so excited to see how it looks. All right, it is 1.50 on Friday night, or Friday, uh, Saturday morning, and the brakes are bled. We got the rears that look like crap. We're not gonna talk about that. We get the fronts bled. Look at these brake lines. Everything looks great. The time is now. All that we have left is to put the tires on and lower it on the ground and see how it looks. So I'm going to put the rears on and put the back side down. And then I'll lower the front all together as a group so we can kind of get the effect all at once. I am so pumped with how that came out. I cannot, let me just make sure it looks like this might be so much. I cannot be happier. Uh, so it's 3 a.m. and it's 80 degrees in my garage. So I'm actually gonna leave it at that for now. I'm super happy, leave it on a good note. The brakes all bled fine. The car looks good. I don't know if it's gonna be too low to drive like this or not. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, but I'm super excited. Uh, so I'm gonna edit this and try to get it out to you guys before I fly out in three hours, which would be 6 a.m. to a flight to Boston. Uh, my mother-in-law is finishing her nursing program. I should say not finishing her nursing, finished sharing her program to be a nurse practitioner. Uh, so I think it's a master's in nursing. So we're going up in Boston to celebrate that. Uh, so with all that, I uh, hope you guys all have a great weekend. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you saw. Uh, hit the like button if you like what you saw. Leave some comments and hope to see you again soon.